Hi, everybody. Bill Windsor told me that he did not request that the film he did regarding Larry Neal uh, be prohibited from sharing at other sites. He said he didn't make that request. And I know he didn't make that request with the films that Mary Neal did for Lawless America. So I think that this is because uh, the death of Larry Neal, my brother, mentally ill, physically disabled, American heart patient, uh, I think is a part of the cover-up. So I'm just going to uh, film it now because they won't let it show. Larry Neal was a mentally ill heart patient who was secretly arrested in Memphis in mid-July 2003 and detained until his death on August 1, 2003, here in the Shelby County Jail. Larry spent most of his life from his early childhood in uh, mental institutions, specifically the Western State Mental Hospital in Bolivar, Tennessee. Now, during the 70s, mental hospitals changed from keeping just about anybody who was mentally ill to releasing those who uh, appeared to present no threat to the public. So after release from Western State, Larry was arrested numerous times in Memphis for misdemeanors connected with his handicap, paranoid schizophrenia. His family's request to the state of Tennessee that Larry be hospitalized were not met. Occasionally, they would grant that request on a temporary basis in uh, situations where there was a crisis intervention. The last 10 years of Larry's life, he suffered from really severe respiratory problems and a heart condition, and as a result, he was always on prescription medications. He had to have them in order to live. During the 18 days of Larry's final incarceration here, his family and state-appointed social worker searched for him as a missing person. The jail falsely and repeatedly reported that neither Larry Neal nor a John Doe, fitting his description, were incarcerated. It's therefore reasonable to assume that none of Larry's prescription medications were provided during his incarceration, and more than likely that caused his death. Larry had suffered similar arrests in the very same facility here for misdemeanors related to his mental illness, the last of which was only two weeks before he was incarcerated and died here. The Memphis police had on many occasions provided transport for him for emergency medical treatment during his psychotic episodes for 20 years. Memphis police were totally aware of Larry's condition, had contact information for his social worker and his family, and they would call them whenever he was arrested on public nuisance charges, panhandling and the like, at least until the last time he was arrested. Prior to Larry's final incarceration, whenever he was arrested, people would contact the social worker and the family. Given the long history that Larry had with the Memphis police, it's impossible for his family to believe that the Shelby County Jail did not know that Larry had been under arrest for this period of time prior to his death and that his family was agonizing over his whereabouts, searching for him as a missing person. The police repeatedly denied having him. Fingerprinting is a routine part of arrest procedures, so they would have known exactly who they had because Larry had been fingerprinted here many times before. But instead, Larry's family spent weeks looking for him while he suffered and died right here in this jail. One might speculate that perhaps the police got tired of all the work they had to do as a caretaker for Larry over the years, and they let him die. Larry would stand and sing out on street corners, bother pedestrians for handouts, eat in grocery stores without paying, and things like that. They secretly arrested Larry, had him incarcerated for 18 days, lied to his family and the social worker, denied his arrest, and then apparently killed him by undisclosed means. Now, the real kicker, neither the jail nor the U.S. Department of Justice will release any records or any information about the incarceration and death of Larry Neal.
Thank you, Bill Windsor. Thank you very much. This is Lawless America, where people, especially black people, are murdered regularly in custody. And I think that that situation has gotten much worse since they got away so far with the secret arrest and wrongful death of Larry Neal. We don't know whether Larry was uh, murdered. We don't know whether he was, uh, well, we know he was murdered, but we don't know whether Larry was uh, killed in a restraint chair, tasered, uh, killed for sport, like they make mentally ill people fight each other to the death. And that's happened before in Memphis Shelby County Jail, according to a former corrections officer there named Mr. Story. Early Story. He told me about a case where two mentally ill people were released in Memphis Shelby County Jail to fight. And the bigger one uh, ended up fighting a smaller one. And the smaller one was a small, effeminate man. And the small, effeminate man died. His name was Mr. Gregory. So he called me, this gentleman from Memphis Shelby County Jail, and told me that uh, because he felt real bad he couldn't tell me specifically what happened to Larry Neal. But they had already falsified drug charges against this corrections officer and fired him, uh, he said, before Larry came in on his final incarceration. Uh, he knew of Larry from previous incarcerations. Larry is a very memorable, he was a very memorable man. He was so schizophrenic. But he didn't know what happened to Larry on that final incarceration, the fatal one that terminated in his death on August 1st, 2003. I want you to know that Bill Windsor, is a wonderful person. Do you see him here? He's all about exposing and opposing corruption in the justice system and in American government. For his hard work, he's been arrested. He was arrested, and he faces charges now. That's Bill Windsor of Lawless America. The same thing happened to uh, Reverend Edward Pinckney. Uh, he is involved in uh, fighting oppression. He um, did a recall election. And because Reverend Pinckney did a recall election, uh, he was arrested. And it's not illegal to do a recall election. But he was arrested for doing a recall election. Please go to Truth Out and read about Reverend Edward Pinckney in prison for fighting the Whirlpool Corporation. He's against the sale of public lands in Benton Harbor, Michigan uh, for little or nothing. They're selling the public lands for little of nothing, and it's being used for private use. The residents of Benton Harbor, Michigan, are mostly, well, they're over 90% black. But right across the river in St. Joe, Michigan, the residents are over 90% white. So it's, it's like back in the day, across the tracks, only there it's across the river. And the black people in Benton Harbor, Michigan, are in very separate condition. And this man, uh, Reverend Edward Pinckney, stands up for them and to protect their lands and make sure they have representatives, duly elected representatives who really stand up for the people. And that is not what he felt like they get when they elected uh the last mayor there, they felt like he was a plant by the Whirlpool Corporation to help them claim more public lands. Uh, and so he 